Alfred Hitchcock was a director who understood how to get the visceral, emotional reaction he wanted from an audience. The music in many Hitchcock films, especially Psycho, provides more of the suspense of the film than the dialogue. By close reading various scenes from the film, we are able to see and hear how the drama is created orally first, then visually. We will also do a close reading of the score and corresponding visuals from the iconic shower scene. How does the sound work like it does to create the suspense of the film? To begin, in many scenes, there is no score to accompany the action or dialogue. Watch here to see how the suspense is built using only action. The result is mildly suspenseful, but not as effective as it is with the dialogue. In quite a hurry. Yes, I didn't intend to sleep so long. I almost had an accident last night from sleepiness, so I decided to pull over. Let's look at another scene to see where the dialogue is more effective in creating an air of suspense than action alone. You understand? I don't hate her. I hate what she's become. I hate the illness. Wouldn't it be better if you put her someplace? Here we can see that the dialogue combined with the action provides more suspense than the action alone. Let's now watch how the score, when combined with the action and dialogue, creates optimum suspense. You mean an institution? A madhouse? People always call a madhouse someplace, don't they? Put her in someplace. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to sound uncaring. <laughs> what do you know about caring? Have you ever seen the inside of one of those places? The laughing and the tears. And the cruel eyes studying you. My mother there. <sighs> but she's harmless. <laughs> She's as harmless as one of those stuffed birds. I am sorry. I, I only felt... It seems she's hurting you. I meant well. People always mean well. They cluck their thick tongues and shake their heads and suggest oh so very delicately. To enhance the emotion of the action, let's look at the iconic shower scene without the Hermann score. The scene is still terrifying, but not as menacing without the music. In his article, Hermann, Hitchcock, and the Music of the Irrational, author Royal S. Brown says, As Hitchcock discovered, the existential distance and the emotional gap between a movie audience and what is transpiring on the screen are so great that even the sight of a knife repeatedly entering the body of a nude woman and even the sounds of her screams and gasps did not create sufficient visceral involvement in the scene. 
what was needed and what Hitchcock got at the instigation of Psycho's composer Bernard Herrmann was music, and a very particular kind of music, as we shall soon see, to fully communicate the sequences of irrationality on its own terms. Just calm down, Nemo. You, you, you won't go belly up, I promise. You're gonna be okay. Even out of context, this score signals danger, disaster, and ultimately death. In looking at the music itself, we see the dynamics indicated by Hermann to be molto forzando e feroce, literally translated means forcing and very fierce. Watching an orchestra perform the piece, you will notice even the motions of the performers suggest the sinister deed taking place on the screen. theme's rhythmic pattern shows up multiple times prior to the shower scene in what author Stephen Husserick calls the psycho theme. In this way, the audience receives the greatest impact from the music because the pattern has already been established and is familiar. Discussing the murder theme, Husserick says, The pattern descends as altered octaves, keynote pitches from the psycho theme, and major sevenths in reference to the Hitchcock chord, while the individual pitches are rising chromatically from E-flat to G-flat as the pattern repeats sequentially. The rhythm from the end of the psycho theme is heard here in retrograde. The recorded score is also drenched in reverb, with each instrument being panned off center, both left and right, thus creating a wide space for each note to ring through and create the desired chilling effect. Hitchcock was so taken with the music of the film that he doubled Hermann's usual fee, saying that 33% of the effect of Psycho was due to the music. As an observation, there's no way to know if it was intentional or not, but the pitch made by turning on the shower is the same as the first notes of the murder theme. This device could be seen as a clever method of foreshadowing Marion's impending doom. Emmy and Grammy award-winning composer Danny Elfman was tasked with composing the score for the 2012 biography, Hitchcock, a film about the making of Psycho. In an interview discussing the film and its iconic music, Elfman said, the stabbing strings that accompany the famous shower scene in Psycho is, along with the theme from Jaws, one of the most recognized sonic pieces in the film world. There's nothing else that really compares to it, said Elfman, whose own score was inspired by that of original Psycho composer Bernard Herrmann which he heard in its original form and in its entirety and also re-recorded note for note. Not many people ever got that pleasure, he said. Handling that score was like being a priest holding the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was that kind of honor. What we're now going to do is take a look at the Elfman remake and the Hermann original and compare them for any differences that may inform us about each composition. Author Kate Newell says, while some adaptations are informed by an agenda of fidelity, others are informed by an agenda of infidelity. When an adaptation's infidelities are celebrated, the argument is made defensively and protectively, as though the infidelities are beside the point rather than the point itself. So let's begin with the Hermann original, and notice how the reverb creates a space for the score to exist that's larger than its original recorded form. <laughs>
let's now look at the Danny Elfman remake from the 1998 version of Psycho by director Gus Van Sant. You'll notice the notes are played more staccato than the original, and the reverb you find on the original is almost non-existent in the opening strings. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up the track and we're going to add some reverb and delay, much like you'd find on the original Hermann score. Let's take a listen again to the Elfman track and notice how the audio has changed. As you can see, the reverb and delay drastically alters the sound of the track. Let's now look at the two tracks played simultaneously. big differences stand out. The first, the tracks don't line up. The Elfman remake is actually a little faster than the original. The Elfman track also features three additional measures of the stabbing theme each time before it goes to the lower notes. We can see that this is not an exact note-for-note -note recreation, and in comparing the two, the original Hermann score with the reverb gives the music an unnatural quality that works better for the film than the cleaned up Elfman version. So what does this all mean? Author John Belton said, the psychology of the image differs from that of the soundtrack. The viewer perceives and regards the information presented on the soundtrack differently from that on the image track, though in both cases the viewer, through his or her response to visual and aural cues, plays a decisive role in the realization of the events seen and heard on the screen. As the evidence we've seen would suggest, Psycho would not be the powerful emotional movie it is without the music. In the shower scene, the quick edits of the film and the quick stabbing strings of the music work together to create an unforgettable and haunting image so vivid that even the bravest of us will think twice before singing in the shower. <laughs> 